At the Battle of McAllen, as previously shown by hour number four and a half of the invasion, a battalion belonging to the 4th Armored Division of the 16th Group Army had crossed a narrow, shallow crossing point of the Rio into the United States, encountering, surrounding, and destroying armed civilian pockets leading up to the hour 4.5 to hour number 5 battle at the textile mill and cotton fields as shown on the previous map as such. As armed civilians frantically tried to engage with small arms and take cover in the irrigation canals and behind gently rolling hills and within buildings in the area, and the single PLA armored battalion in its rolling diamond or rolling arrow formation proceeded to surround and annihilate this civilian pocket, literally corralling them into it. As they went, they destroyed anything that the drone-fed, ISR, satellite-fed intelligence that was assembled by artificial intelligence was ordered and relayed to them to do. Their advance would have looked very similar to this. Only this shows it from an aerial point of view where a lone Su-25 is coming down on an attack run, firing its shorter-range KH-23 air-to-ground laser-guided missiles along with the tanks advancing in a similar manner to the peeling off of their rolling diamond or rolling arrow formation. As you can see, they've blasted buildings to smoking rubble and a fuel tank erupted in flames after hitting a fuel storage tank at one of these farms. Destruction was everywhere. And these fresh explosions tell the tale as armed civilians are frantically trying to fire back as they run across the fields. And this truck trying to frantically take off as CH-901 loitering munitions fly overhead, looking for a target. And here you have a grouping of armed civilians turning and firing as they run across the field with a spot by this wooded area where a few fleeing pickup trucks were blown into rubbled pieces everywhere, smoking twisted hulks of metal Carnage and chaos was all over the battlefield and destruction everywhere. As you can see, you have the leading elements of one tank company here showing three platoons, one, one, two, three, four, five, two, one, two, three, four, five, and the rest behind it. You have the point vehicles of this Company here peeling off, same with the left side. This could have been any single one of the civilian engagements, as some of which did have air support from SU-25s as this battalion went up the coastal area, clearing civilian pockets. By hour five, the vast majority of the 46th Mechanized Infantry Division was about to pass through the town of Edinburgh and the surrounding area right here on the map as they headed north of 281, their main route of advance. Two battalions of it, thereby receiving orders to peel off of the rest of the division in order to clear the large town 
of all armed resistance in order to secure the route to prevent harassment against the soon-to-arrive 18th Air Defense Artillery Brigade and 19th Field Artillery Division and, in addition, the 16th Group Army's Independent Headquarters Battalion itself in command over the entire Group Army containing its actual commander and command elements, in addition to the rest of the Group Army soon to be following behind the 16th in one massive, miles-long, gigantic convoy. By this point, the second of three different sorties by the SU-25 squadron was already being carried out with one group of two pairs of the lethal ground attack jets tasked with providing close air support to these two mechanized infantry battalions belonging to the 46th PLA Division of the 16th Group Army. Pushing eastwards off of Route 281, the companies of both battalions, eight each in terms of companies for a total of 16, including each battalion's headquarters, fire support company, and fire support company spread out in an L-shape facing east and north, respectively. This is a portion of the edges of the town of Edinburgh itself. Now, there were 16 companies involved as there were two battalions, eight companies per battalion, including each battalion's one fire support company consisting of shorter range, 130 millimeter Type 63 multiple rocket launching systems and their towed systems and their trucks, which carried their ammunition, they were their supply vehicles, as well as the self-propelled assault gun slash mortar vehicles, the PLL 05s, and their accompanying supply vehicles, as well as their fueler truck, their recovery vehicle, which of course is a standard type 84 recovery vehicle and two MRAPs, usually a VP-11 or a Tiger MRAP. One of these two pairs of SU-25s were tasked with providing close air support to these two mechanized infantry battalions belonging to the 46th Division. Pushing eastwards off of Route 281, the companies of both battalions, eight each for a total of 16, including each battalion's headquarters and fire support company, spread out in an L shape facing east and north respectively on the outer southeasternmost edges of town. And this map is just an excerpt of one part of that area, by which point a local barrage of anti-tank missiles, 100 millimeter cannons, 30 millimeter auto can cannons, cruise serve machine guns, were soon to be joined by the PLL-05 120mm dual assault gun mortars and 130mm short-range multiple launch rockets of each battalion's fire support company, totaling two between the two battalions present, meaning one fire support company apiece per each battalion. This area, now virtually sealed off via the eastern and northernmost companies forming the ends of the L guaranteed no escape for the hundreds of now trapped armed civilians corralled into the total two by two mile area, which in addition to the to all the aforementioned forms of firepower would also fall victim to intense airstrikes via SU-25 directed air-to-ground ordnance. Heavy artillery would not be utilized at this particular engagement as it was both not needed and the fighting was far too short-lived, lasting in total barely one hour prior to conducting a vehicle-mounted 30-minute-long cordon and sweep operation to check the smashed town for any surviving combatants. Moreover, finding none, as the drone-directed air 
or drone directed ground fire mixed with air strikes had literally eliminated almost everyone within that two by two mile space. Save for a small group, the two battalions formed back up at the rear of the 46th Division's convoy moving up the highway. Of course, while conducting this battle, the elevation and traverse and vectoring of weapon systems was of very critical importance and precise calculations as per fire control and as per FDC type elements and joint air, air traffic controllers guaranteed that there were no friendly fire incidents. As you can see on this map, here is a mechanized infantry company of its armor personnel carriers and infantry fighting vehicles moving through this area with their weapons oriented this way. And of course, this group before moving up is holding its fire before this element goes around and takes position further off the map and turns to face to create an even longer L shape. As again, this particular map segment showing just this part of the battle is a two mile by 1.25 mile or one and a quarter mile map. So here you have the headquarters elements of this particular company that is already taking the corner of the L here. You have them in a sort of star formation with the MRAPs, you know, doing a wagon circle with their weaker vehicles, like their support vehicles, their fuel truck, their uh, recovery vehicle, and their supply trucks and command vehicles within the circle of MRAPs to protect them. And of course, you have this fire support company right here. And being that this is on the outer edges of a battle, you have a, you have a smashed fence around this farmland. You have a road sort of going off into the countryside. There's already destroyed buildings, as you can see, the rubble piles that were once buildings and homes and other structures right here. And you see the movement of this company through this area. They sort of pause here and then they continue moving on where they're actually starting to be engaged slightly by armed civilians running through the area desperately as mortars begin to fall and airdropped munitions begin to rain down upon them or be fired upon them in this case with this SU-25 firing two KH-23 beam guided or laser guided air to ground missiles which are short range roughly about seven mile long range and of course you have CH-901s the favorite mass-produced loitering munition created by the Chinese it's very cheap and effective and easy to make and can be launched either one at a time or 48 at a time from, an, from a TEL-based like system, which are usually fired by uh, dedicated troops and headquarters units that are uh, put in that dedicated role as far as like drone operations are concerned. And they were, they were fired, of course, by the 46th Mechanized Infantry Brigade's Headquarters Battalion, which had such dedicated drone forces within it. And of course... You have short range light artillery like your 130 millimeter multiple launch rockets flying and impacting areas like right here. This stands for rocket impacts, leveling all these buildings and eliminating everybody that was either in them or outside around them, as you can see, destroying this pickup truck right here and eliminating the troops or the, or sorry, the armed civilian combatants with the red circles around them. Same goes for mortar blasts. All those around the mortar blasts have been eliminated or hit by these loitering munitions as this group right here. And these were armed with fragmentation warheads on these loitering munitions. And of course you have your small arms like your crew serve weapons being fired by the turret gunners on armor personnel carriers. As the infantry squads remain with inside their vehicles, they haven't yet dismounted. They're still in the safety of their vehicles while their uh, turret gunners, if they're on an uh, IFV, are firing their 100 millimeter cannons or 30 millimeter auto cannons with uh, blasting ammunition or either of that, or they can fire armor piercing ammo, but in this case, they're firing blasting ammunition, which impact like a grenade would. And 
you also have coax machine guns aboard those too, like a 7.62 by uh, 54 millimeter coax. And they're all levying their firepower into this giant L shape, especially once this additional company gets through to set up and there's other companies further up and they block off an entire area, an entire area like this and going out like that. And they vector all their firepower in it, along with the airstrikes, loitering munition strikes, and as all these forces are running, they're being hit by various things, whether it be mortars, rockets, loitering munitions, air-based ordnance, like dropped 1,000-pound munitions, which wipe out these entire groups along with mortars. And buildings are badly damaged or completely destroyed, depending on how they're hit. Like this house is gutted. These barns are gutted. These troops have been blown away by small arms or IFV fire from heavier IFV weapons as they try to flee this barn. If troop or you have uh, civilians, armed civilians running down the streets trying to run the gauntlet of fire. And of course, over here, there's a gas station. So over here, you have troops that just cleared these houses running back and re-entering their armor personnel carriers. They were ordered to clear these buildings as they didn't have to be unnecessarily destroyed, but they had to be cleared of any possible enemy combatants. These are all houses. This is just a neighborhood, typical neighborhood on the edge of a typical town here. You, know, you have a mix of farmland, small businesses, housing neighborhoods, all in one little area, just like you would in any other typical and small American town. This edge of town has been completely obliterated by all the munitions you see. By this time, this was hour number five, and the battle had just concluded here at Edinburgh. And there were zero Chinese casualties at this engagement. 200 Amer or 280 American KIAs roughly 100 wounded in actions and 85 POWs. And all of the POWs that were taken were all wounded in actions that were found, were left behind because the 40 that miraculously escaped due to hiding extremely well and fleeing after the battle, only half of the 40 were wounded in actions taken by the other 20 who were somehow not injured. They hid in places like underground storm shelters and other similar types of places where they could withstand a lot of the impacts. Even the aerial dropped munitions because some of these storm shelters were very sturdy concrete structures that would have taken a direct hit within the either on top of it directly or within uh, just feet of it to completely destroy it. But there were some survivors due to miracles like that. Most buildings along the edges of and just outside of town within the two and a, the two by two mile total kill box were made of wood and or weak building materials in general with very few made with brick or stone and only due to some underground storm shelters did even 20 manage to survive completely unharmed. Only due to being pressed for time was the cordon and sweep not done more thoroughly by dismounting larger numbers of their troops to do a more in-depth search of the former kill box after having saturated it with munitions. This left the tiny group of survivors able to slip away into the pre-dawn horizon once they were certain that the invaders had left not wanting to stay in the area too long in case follow-up forces did another, even more far-detailed search of the area. This foresight allowed the people of this tiny group to seek shelter in a scrub brush and mesquite wood forest to the east of town from where they would attempt to send one to two men back later to forage the flattened town for anything conceivably even useful, such as supplies, now being ever more important as they now had to remain hidden and out of sight in order just to survive, with even being spotted only one time, leading to the distinct possibility 
of a drone, air, or artillery strike, or even worse, potential capture by ground forces being levied upon them, something many Americans now feared as a great uncertainty. Even as the fighting began in Edinburgh, to the west, a large force of armed civilians organized as a local militia force was under assault shortly after hour number three, though only by this point having their main fortified compound, essentially a ranch with high earthen berms as walls topped with barbed wire strands interlaced with concertina wire smashed by 300 millimeter rocket artillery fire. However, they possessed other compounds, two more to be exact, which weren't fortified and thus not known of until ISR assets spotted hundreds more of this force emerging from these very compounds and taking to the hilly terrain and roads in the area. By hour five, the 16th Spec Ops Battalion, now mounted up once again in their headquarters company's Lynx all-terrain vehicles, was en route to the area. Along with two battalions of the 5th Anti-Tank Brigade themselves rerouted to specifically attack these now emerging forces, who themselves received news of the destruction of their main compound by either seeing it directly, hearing it if a bit further away, or if in the other compounds by having witnesses and or other members who survived by being at a safe enough distance away, only to hurry to relay the information to the other two remaining compounds. As in, when all of the fighting began, their first compound was already hit in the first hour, along with the 4th of the 133rd, along with the troops crossing, surrounding and destroying these pockets of civil civilians, as far as the anti-tank forces, as far as the Spec Ops Battalion destroying the 136th, as far as the International Airport and the city of Brownsville being captured, as far as McAllen being captured and cleared and shelled horribly. These guys got it as well, insofar as artillery fire from the 300 millimeter rockets, but it only hit the known compound that the CHICOM intelligence had uh, discovered and prepared in their battle plan before the uh, onset of the invasion, but they did not know of two other lesser compounds that were more or less secretive because they weren't fortified and they and members were not often seen going in or out of them. It was they were less widely known of. In the next video we will go into this last specific battle relating to these militia forces before finishing up the battle of McAllen slash southern Rio Grande or lower Rio Grande Valley. So far in the battle, again, the 16th Group Army spearheading the invasion had sent their main combat units across the river under the support of heavy artillery fire from their 19th Field Artillery Division, firing 300 millimeter rockets from their two PHL-03 battalions, which were their longest range artillery uh, pieces they had available. And then their normal heavy artillery, such as their 122 millimeter rocket artillery, which were their truck-based PHL-81 systems, which were similar to your Russian grad systems, as well as the PLL-01-105 towed howitzers, 105, or 155 millimeter towed howitzers, and 152 PLL-66 howitzers. There were five battalions of each type of howitzer, two of PHL-03, 300 millimeter rockets, and there were four of the PHL-81s. So by this point in the battle, by hour five, as the anti-tank troops 
had gone across the river and began to clear the western side of it, encircling and destroying first the paramilitary forces who guarded the border, along with armed civilians in the town of Abram, to encircling these groups of 200 civilians each with heavy artillery support as they surrounded them and destroyed them within minutes. The anti-tank battalions cleaned up what was essentially wreckage of the fighting of the artillery strikes, and one battalion had been dispatched to assist the Spec Ops battalion, but they, by the time they arrived, there was nothing left for them to do other than to proceed and surround and destroy more civilian pockets. As the Spec Ops battalion traveled north, slowly and cautiously, awaiting for other units to move into position to engage the final forces that were on the map insofar as forces left to that could pose any kind of threat to the movement of the entire invasion prong by potentially hitting weaker vehicles and causing bottlenecks and traffic jams, which is the main purpose of this clearance of this large 100 by 120 mile area from down in Mexico all the way near Corpus Christi, which would be the next destination of this long chain of group armies en route to I-10. With several sorties being flown by this point by the Su-25 squadrons, they gave cover to all the forces on the map, with their very first sortie being essentially to fly far deep inland on this battle space as far as possible and knock out targets that the artillery couldn't as of ver as of yet as of that initial moment reach such as beyond the reach of the very long range 300 millimeter rockets such as hitting the HHC and the signals company attached to the 136 maneuver enhancement brigade the signals company of the 625th brigade which was attached to the 136 maneuver and heading back again to destroy them once troops of three different anti-tank battalions surrounded and destroyed these armed civilians and what remained of the firing battery and headquarters battery that fled the destruction from the initial 300 millimeter strikes. They only were able to fire one more small volley as all that was left was one remaining fire battery before these anti-tank troops surrounded and destroyed them along with additional 300 millimeter rocket fire. And these forces would go on, catch up with the stragglers that had abandoned their vehicles and fled on foot, who by this point, hours in, on foot mostly, managed to reach this point before being surrounded and destroyed by these different, these three different tank battalions, or anti-tank battalions rather, before all the anti-tank battalions were to effectively link up with the rest of the group army before moving into Corpus Christi. But before that had to happen, there was the final showdown with all the militia forces appearing almost like a kicked hornet's nest upon all of them realizing that their main compound had been fully destroyed hours earlier. Hour number five, going into hour number six, will cover this last major battle on the map.